One of the very special things we're going to do this morning is uh, dedicate Evie Harbull to the Lord, down in Emily's little daughter. And uh, before we do that, take a look at the pictures if you would. John and Emily, why don't you bring Evelyn Noel to the platform, if you would. God bless you guys. What a special day this is. Come on up, if you would. I know you have some family and friends here. If you are here to celebrate with the Harbolds, would you just stand? Can we just greet you? We just want to welcome you. Wow, we got a whole section over here. God bless you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I know this is a very special day for all of you. And this little bright bundle of joy... Wow. We're going to hear more about how special this day really is to uh, both you, John, and Emily in just a moment. And I know our whole church is going to be so encouraged by the word that comes shortly here. But I wanted to read just a passage of Scripture and then pray a prayer blessing um, over Evelyn. I thought of uh, Mary's story, the Mary, the mother of Jesus, and how Gabriel appeared to her and and the angel Gabriel greeted Mary, said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. And that's my declaration. Uh, I just want to reiterate the, the declaration that was put over Mary's life. I want to say that over Evelyn today, that you are a favored little daughter, little baby girl, and the Lord is with you. But it didn't end there. There was a response that Mary had that I pray, and I know you pray, that Evelyn has as she grows older. Of course, Mary was confused and disturbed by being visited by the angel, as probably any of us would, right? And so the angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High, the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel. His kingdom will never end. And isn't it interesting that you are going to raise a daughter whose the kingdom of God is, is going to continue on through her life, through another generation. So Mary is like, how can this be? I'm a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and I pray that the Holy Spirit comes upon her at an early age. And he says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. He, he will overshadow you. And the baby will be holy. And I believe Evelyn is going to live a holy life for the Lord. Um, and so here's Mary's response. And this is precious. This is the attitude that I, I trust will be nurtured. It's already been nurtured in your own lives. I've seen this verse come alive in your own lives as you surrender to the Lord, but I know you desire that for Evelyn. So here's what Mary responded. She said, I am the Lord's servant. Wouldn't you love to, to hear that when she's a teenager? That she would say, I am the Lord's servant. Not a servant to this culture, not a servant to this world, not a servant to, you know, just you and mom, you and dad and your rules in this house or what the youth pastor said. No, I am a servant to the Lord. And here's, here's the line. May everything you have said about me come true. May everything you have said about me come true. May it be according to your word. 
Amen. Would you declare and bless this little child with me? Come on over here, Evelyn. We'll see if you can do this, okay? Okay, here we go. Take a good look. Isn't she precious? <laughs> Let's pray. Father, what a gift. What a gift. What a responsibility. So, Lord, we do bless this little child. We dedicate her to you. She came from you. She belongs to you. Thank you for godly parents who have been given the task to steward this little life, to steward the gifts that you've already placed in her, Father. Give John and Emily and their extended family all oh, great wisdom. Give them patience. Give them a love, an unconditional love that they have experienced themselves. May they transfer that to this little child. And we pray a blessed life. We pray for divine health all the days of her life in Jesus' name. We declare that over her. We pray for divine prosperity, God, that, that she will not be without want, that she will have what she needs and the blessings that flow when we follow you. So, Father, we thank you for her, and we pray, God, a great future, even to a thousand generations. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, she must be want, want to be a preacher like her mama. She's, she's going after my microphone. <laughs> oh, come on, Connie, if you would, and help me if you would. Uh, we have a little flower and a little Bible and a certificate. And again, we're just so proud of you guys and know that you're going to do a great job as parents. Amen. Amen. There you go. So, I don't know how we're going to transition to the next, this next part, but I know you've got some things you want to share this morning. So, um, let's give them a hand as they find their seat for a moment. While we're getting all set here, John and Emily are actually going to share a word this morning because of the significance of this day. And um, I'll be in the pulpit for the next couple of weeks, uh, next Sunday and the week after, but... Uh, what I, I thought this was such a fitting way to have a baby dedication, to have them share the story behind um, their beautiful gift, Evelyn. And many of you know uh, John and Emily's story, but there's many of you who don't, and I know you're going to be very encouraged. John and Emily have served alongside on our staff as part-time staff in the area of young adults. And John and Emily, you guys have done a great job through the years. We just appreciate your commitment to the ministries uh, here at the church and obviously to the Lord. And you guys have grown so much um, and uh, we're just so proud of you. And I, I know that uh, your story is going to encourage a lot here today. So I just encourage you guys, this is family here. It would, hey, it would really help them if you just put a big old smile on your face. Make them feel like they're at home and may the anointing of the Holy Spirit just allow you to share from your heart. Listen, you don't have to prove anything. Just We already love you. You don't have to prove anything to him. He already loves you. And so share the freedom of the Lord here this morning. All right. God bless you. All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming this morning. Um, welcome to this is the cutest service uh, because this is the only one where we have Evie out here. So, um, yeah, man, there's a lot of anticipation in that, in that moment. Um, we're just so excited to have the opportunity to share with you this morning um, the story of, you know, of our lives and just really a, a part of it. Many of you know our story already. You, you understand why today is such a special day to us. Um, we want to share part of that story with you this morning. Obviously, we could talk for hours about it, and um, we're going to... Stick to our notes this morning so we don't do that uh, here this morning. But um, Emily's actually going to, uh, we're going to tag team this morning. She's going to jump in in just a little bit. We're excited to share what God has done in our lives and, and what he can do in your lives as well. Um, our desire really this morning is to give God glory. It's not about us. It's not just about our story. Um, it's sharing a testimony of God's goodness and God's faithfulness, which is for everybody. Um, I believe this morning that many people will find power to overcome as we share this morning. Uh, 
I believe God's given us a word. He's been working it out in our lives for almost four years. Um, so it's a lot to pack in, but uh, I believe that, that God has anointed this word to um, almost be contagious, uh, of just power to overcome. So I want to start out by reading uh, a passage in Isaiah chapter 61. It says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord, for the display of his splendor. So I'm going to jump in here with our story. Um, back in May of 2016, we found out that we were expecting our first child, Samuel. Um, we were so excited to meet him. And all the initial checkups and ultrasounds looked great. Yeah, he was perfect. Um, but then about three and a half months into the pregnancy, uh, Emily started to experience some complications. And these complications caused us to have many really scary trips to the hospital. Um, the last trip to the hospital lasting several weeks. And, and during this time, um, the doctors would check in on Samuel to evaluate the growth. They would evaluate health and safety of Samuel. Um, and eventually, the complications led to delivering our son Samuel three months early by C-section. Um, because Samuel was delivered over three months early, he was very tiny, um, just over a pound. They immediately moved him to the NICU, uh, which is a neo-intensive care unit uh, for very small babies. And we were very hopeful that he would be able to grow and build up strength there. Um, in the first two weeks, we saw many miracles um, and really encouraging signs in Samuel's health. However, things quickly took a turn, and um, at just 19 days old, uh, Samuel was taken home to heaven. So there is a season that followed for us and of extremely deep grieving and deep brokenness. And I know there's people here this morning who have experienced seasons like that. Or maybe you're in one now. Um, in this season, and we had to process the feelings of pain and, and emptiness and loss and fear. And, and you can keep going. Many of you have experienced those seasons as well. It was during this season, though, I believe there was a point where God began to lead us into healing. And that's really what we want to focus on this morning, the point where God began to lead us into healing. And that was a pivotal moment for our lives, and I believe really defined where we're at now and it really defined the rest of our lives. Early on, we knew that we wanted God to redeem our situation. We knew in our hearts we wanted God to redeem our situation. You know, there are things that happen in our lives that are so painful um, that no one would blame us if we um, made those things a part of our identity and we carry them for the rest of our lives. We thought for our situation, we could go through the rest of our lives with this pain and with this hurt, and, and, and 20 years from now, tell somebody this story, and, and there would be nobody in the world who would say, you know, you should have gotten over that long ago. That's why it's up to us to allow God to take the broken pieces and put them back together, to allow Him to redeem us, 
It's up to us. Nobody's going to make us do that. And it's also important when we talk about redemption to remember that redemption isn't just about getting the thing that we lost. It's not just about getting the thing that we wanted. There, there are many people who would tell us that God would give us another child after, uh, after Samuel. And, and we knew that was true. We believed it with all our hearts. Um, and we really appreciated the encouragement when, when somebody would say that. However... We knew that the healing work that God wanted to do, uh, was going to do, had to go so much deeper than that. Um, because God created us as spiritual beings. He created us with spirit, and God wants to do a spiritual work in us. God wants to do a spiritual work of healing in us before he physically blesses us, before he physically restores something to us. And Jesus actually talks about this in the book of Matthew when he says, in Matthew chapter 9, no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine, and here's the key, and ruining the skins. New wine is stored in new wineskins so that both are preserved. You know, our broken situations our pain and our loss can make us like old wineskins, a little beat up, a little worn, a little stretched out, a little tired. God wants to pour out his blessings like new wine, but he wants to make sure that we're able to receive it and that we're able to hold it and that it doesn't hurt us more than it helps us. Because if we get the thing that we lost, the thing that we wanted originally, but we haven't allowed God to heal our hurt and our brokenness, we will not be able to steward the blessing that God has given us. For us, in our situation, that would have meant carrying hurt and fear into our parenting. All of our interactions with our future children would have been kind of run through this filter of loss, this filter of pain. We knew that we needed healing to be able to receive the blessing of another child, to be able to receive the blessing of Evie. We needed to offer God our broken situation and allow him to restore each and every part of it. We understood that for Emily and I, we still had many years ahead of walking out our Christian faith. When, when our experience turned out differently than what we had hoped for, you know, there was that struggle of thoughts of doubt and discouragement. But we knew that for us it was too early to give up on believing God for big things in our lives. And really for anybody, I want to encourage you, no matter where you're at, it's always too early to give up on believing God for big things in your life. We knew that the greatest victory for us would be obedience to God on the other side of the trial, on the other side of the tragedy. Um, for all of us as believers, the biggest victory that we can have in our lives is to be able to walk through a trial, to be able to walk through pain, and come out on the other side still obedient to God, still following Him, still walking in faith. Because we wanted to be, continue to seek God listen for his word, to continue to pursue his call for our lives and continue to step out in faith to believe God for his promises. We didn't want our experience to lower our belief and understanding about who God is and about how good his will is for us. And we knew that those things wouldn't happen if we didn't allow God to heal us on a deeper and spiritual level. The only way that these negative experiences can cripple us is if we refuse to let God heal us, to heal our wounds, and if we put limits on our life because of the brokenness. Refusing to let God heal our wounds can look like staying bitter, staying angry, or just continuing to complain about a situation. 
um, without actually seeking help or seeking answers. We might blame others or blame God or ourselves. Um, We could get jealous. We could have a victim mentality, get stuck in fear, sadness, bitterness, anger, emptiness. And the list could go on and on. And those things are very real, but God wants to heal those, those emotions, those wounds, that brokenness, so that we don't continue to put limits on our life because of those things. Putting limits on our life, it might look like um, putting a limit on the places that we'll go or the people that we'll interact with or the conversations that we'll have. Um, for us, that would have meant not trying to ever have another baby again and thus limiting God's plan for our life because fear would have kept us from trying again. There would have also been certain places that we didn't go because of the memories that they brought up and even things that we refused to talk about, conversations that we'd have to exit because of topics that would come up. But we didn't want to do that. So to pursue healing, I know I found myself at this altar, this one right here, very (laughs) a lot, Um, Just crying out to God to lead me through this healing process. Just begging him to help me know his heart and his will. And um, I was thinking about it this week, and I thought to myself, it would have been really helpful to have one of those masks at that time. Um, Because though I wasn't ashamed of the tears that I was crying, I was pretty ashamed of the um, extremely snotty nose that I get when I cry. So that would have helped out a lot. (laughs) Um, But despite that, those moments were worth any embarrassment, any um, embarrassment that I experienced because he met me there, whether it was this altar or just in our living room or wherever it was, God met me there. And though my personal experience through losing Samuel showed me that babies die, the word of God that says that babies are to live. And I needed God's healing power to transcend my experience so that I might believe his truth and his will that babies are to live. And that's a truth that I'm so convinced of now that I'm so passionate about praying for moms and babies um, that they might experience miracles or just continue on the good path that they're on um, to see a healthy baby delivered. And I know it doesn't make sense in the natural, but I really believe that God uses my prayers to see those miracles happen for others. And like John said earlier, redemption, it's not just about getting what we want um, or what we lost, but it's allowing God to heal us and then refusing to limit God's plan for our life by anything in our past. In our healing journey, there was a point where I began to sense and John began to sense that we had to try again. If we didn't, um, I knew that I would spend the rest of my life wondering what could have happened. And that was a life that I knew I could not bear to live. After a year of waiting with no results, John and I felt led to begin 2019 by fasting and praying, specifically for a healthy pregnancy and baby. And by the end of January, I was expecting. We were overjoyed thankful and amazed at God's timing. Um, At our first doctor's appointment, we actually found out that Evie's due date was to be the same day as Samuel's birthday, um, September 23rd. And we knew that that was just one sign that God was redeeming our story. Throughout the pregnancy, I would have moments where I just felt like I wanted to get out, like I didn't feel like I could stand up under the weight of that journey any longer. Um, But I would remind myself that, or I would remind myself of how I felt not being pregnant, not on that journey to redemption, and how much of a struggle that was, and how much I longed for the opportunity to see God redeem the story. And I realized that, that that was so much worse, and that I just had to take it one day at a time and trust God, and that that was the way through, just one day at a time. And that it would all be worth it because I could see God's redemption story unfolding in our lives. We should expect good things from God. Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So I put my faith in God's goodness, in his faithfulness, in the righteousness of Christ, not in myself. 
And I believe that God wanted to do something good for us. And now Evie is here. <laughs> I've dreamed about baby dedication day uh, since I was in the hospital with Samuel. I just imagine standing here giving a testimony of God's healing power and how he made it. But today is still good. It's, still, it's better than I could have imagined. <laughs> I know that this morning we said we could share so much more. <laughs> We've really only scratched the surface of the stories we could tell you just about how Evie got her name and just other things that God did to show us that he was redeeming this. And it's all by his power, his presence, and his redemption in this situation. We know that the redemptive work that God can do in the life of a believer is powerful, it is a powerful display of his glory. Revelation 12, 11 says, They have defeated him, the enemy, by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. And I want to give everyone the opportunity to respond this morning by reflecting on two questions. So right where you are, I just want you to think about these. Put, you know, you don't have to, if you can identify with our specific situation, you can think about that. But think about your life. Reflect on your life and the broken situations you've experienced. And they might be big, they might be small, they might be obvious, they might not be. Um, but I just want you to reflect on these two, request, these two questions this morning. Where are you broken this morning? And what healing work is needed in your life? I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes and think about that and just let the Holy Spirit search your heart. Let him lead you in answering these questions. And as you do, I want to reread part of Isaiah 61. It says, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Continue to reflect with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I just want to ask that again. Is there a healing work that you need God to do in your life? And it doesn't matter how impossible it seems because God can do the impossible. It doesn't matter if it was last week or if it was in your childhood, if it was many, many years ago, or if it was recently. God can do the impossible. And it doesn't matter if you've neglected it all those years, God can still bring healing to that. And I believe that God wants to redeem your brokenness this morning. And today can be the first step or it could be the next step on that healing journey. So if you have something in mind that you want God to do, something you want God to heal, I just invite you to just raise your hand this morning if there's something that you would like God to begin working on in your life. Just raise your hand right at your seat. Thank you. I'm going to pray for those who have raised a hand. Um, and you're always welcome if you would like to come to the altar to pray. Like I said, that was so meaningful in my life. It can be now. It can be at the end of the service. Uh, but you are always welcome to come. Um, but I'm going to pray for everyone who raised a hand. Lord, I just thank you for this morning. God, I thank you that you meet us in our brokenness. God, I thank you that your will is to heal. God, I thank you that you have good things in store for us. God, I thank you that no matter how this broken world messes, our, messes us up or messes up our life, God, that you can transcend that experience, God, and show us your heart, your will, God, for that situation, Lord. And I thank you for it, God. I pray that you would just transform us this morning, that we could see your heart for us and know what your plans are for us, God, that we'd surrender that thing, that brokenness to you, God, and that we'd allow you to take it. We'd allow you to bring us the healing that we need, God. Lord, I just pray for courage and strength to keep walking on that journey of healing this morning. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. John. And if, if I could encourage you to continue to keep your head bowed and your eyes closed, um, 
in our story, at each moment that we talked about, you know, facing this issue or that issue, each of those times we faced it with Jesus. Um, I can't imagine facing those things on my own or on our own. I want to encourage you this morning, and my, my prayer is that nobody in this room has to face the situations in your life on your own without Jesus. And Jesus promises that when we choose to follow him, he makes a commitment to, to walk with us through, through every situation, every trial, every tragedy. So um, with, with your eyes closed, I'm just going to ask if there's anybody this morning who hasn't made that decision to follow Jesus or would like to make that decision. Again, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right now. And I'm going to lead us all in a short prayer of just making that commitment to follow Jesus. And I would ask everybody to just repeat after me and, and uh, as a way of encouraging those who are making that commitment. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to redeem our lives. I thank you that you promise to never leave us or forsake us. We choose to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to thank you uh, for letting us share our message this morning. Please be encouraged that what we talked about, God's redemption, isn't just for us. And we can attest to that there's many people in this church, other believers in this church who have testimonies of their own. And I think in weeks ahead, we're going to hear more testimonies of God's faithfulness. But as for everybody uh, who, who follows Christ, there's that promise that he will redeem our, our lives, our situations. Um, and I just want to encourage you in that, to press forward into that and receive that. Pastor Mike's going to dismiss us here this morning. Oh, my. John and Emily, thank you so much for sharing today. This is my second time I heard it, so your words got even deeper into my own heart. Because even as a pastor, um, I know I've hurt a lot of people. Um, some of you still sit here. <laughs> some have not. Some have left. And uh, I've hurt people unintentionally. Um, but I've been hurt too. And I felt like I've been carrying, I've been jaded to some degree. And what, you, what your point was about if you don't get that healing, you just carry that into the next relationship. And I can find myself being jaded towards people, being non-trusting. Let me just keep at people at arm's length. I'll be this pastor, but let me, I don't really want to get to know you. I don't really don't want to get too close because I know it's just going to hurt me. And that's not the way to be a family, is it? And so your words really have profoundly affected me this morning. And uh, thank you so much. And I know those of you, you've been encouraged too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Maybe you'll get a chance uh, on our way out just to greet them um, at a distance, if you would. <laughs> Let them know how much you love them and, and thank you for sharing your story. Why don't we all stand? Let's sing this as we go out this morning.